lights, camera, action! Welcome to Roby Elementary, grade four, Mrs. Fine's class, room 24. We're here today with Mr. Croslin doing water tables. So, I'm here today to help you guys better understand a couple forces and processes in the Earth's surface. In fact, I know gravity makes things fall, including rain and the water in rivers and streams, but what are the three big forces that shape the Earth? So the three forces, three forces that shape not only Indiana, but the Earth. Anybody know what those are? What's one? Yes, yes. Ice. Ice, and ice shapes the earth. What do we call a giant chunk of ice bigger than any building that shapes everybody? Glacier. Yeah, so uh, ice in the form of a glacier will come down giant sized and it will, because of gravity, it moves because of gravity and it will scrape everything even in indiana we know we've had glaciers come through indiana a long time ago it's happened like three or four times that we know of and it scraped all the rocks anything in its way it scraped it took thousands of years and then it got warmer and what happens when ice gets warm yeah it what it melts, it melts and it left right there in a pile all the rocks and gravel and then it, it started melting back and all the water then washed things down. So what's the second big force besides ice? Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Water. Water is a huge force. Water in the form of rivers, lakes, lakes, oceans, you know, even floods, even rain, even floods. Like you could probably go outside right now in your school and look where water has eroded away something. Okay, so we have ice, water, and what's the third? The third one. We don't get a lot of that here. Uh, what's the third one, everybody? Wind. Yeah, wind. So you know, when the wind blows, the reason we don't get a lot, we get sand dunes. You know, and uh, I used to teach third grade and sixth grade in Cairo, Egypt, and I used to go out in the desert in Egypt. And it's all sand. And when the wind blows, that sand will get blown up. When it stops, the sand will fall down the hill of that little dune. In Indiana, we can go to the northern part of the state, and we can go to the Indiana Dune State Park and see how the wind has eroded and deposited sand. And we can go to the middle of the state and see where the glaciers scraped it flat. In fact, there's a certain part of Indiana that it's no higher than 10 feet is so flat. And then we can go to southern Indiana, just south of Indianapolis here, where the glaciers stopped. They pushed everything, they stopped, they deposited gravel, and then they melted, and all the water carved out valleys and hills of southern Indiana. So even in Indiana, we've had ice, water, and wind. Water is one of the biggest ones. I will give you a little bit of a warning. If, if we have a lot of rain, we get a lot of water, we get a lot of moving water, don't ever step into moving water after a rain. It's usually brown. Why, why is rivers and water brown after? Yes. They have, they have lots of what in the water makes it brown? Rocks, gravels, and sediments. In fact, soil, and it's a bad thing, soil gets washed into our rivers and creeks. So don't walk in any kind of flooded water because you don't know how deep it is, how fast it is. If it is going fast enough to carve rocks and make giant valleys, then sure fast enough and strong enough to knock you down and wash you away. So stay out of the, stay, stay out of those. So, so these are the three forces, ice, water, and wind. So erosion, I like to say erosion, is when water, wind, or ice moves things. So shall I use a positive or a minus here? Probably a minus. minus. So erosion may be way up here. It starts to happen. When it gets down here, what do we call? What do we call it when it gets down there? 
Deposition. Deposition. Yeah, what? Deposition. Deposition or deposit. deposit. So I'm going to give that a plus sign over here. So here's our plus. So we have our deposit right here. So we have erosion and deposit. And if you notice, I put this on a hill here. The higher the hill, the more kinetic energy. You know, if it's really flat, we're not going to get a lot, are we? But if it's really high, we have a lot of kinetic energy. And when the water goes, boy, it goes. So here's one thing that a lot of people don't understand. When we have our fields, the reason we don't have a lot of wind erosion in Indiana is because we have plants and trees and all those roots hold our soil down. You know, soil takes a long time to form, but the roots and the plants and the trees hold it in place. So if we get a windstorm, oh, it might blow some leaves, it might blow some twigs, but the soil is protected. Now, when it rains though, sometimes the water starts going and if it's up high, it'll go fast and fast and fast. So if you have a mountain over here, when it rains up on the mountain or snow melts, you're gonna get some really fast. And if you looked at this, if you looked at this stream, it would be V-shaped because the water goes fast and it erodes a lot. Now when it comes down, it starts slowing down. And if it gets if it slows down, it starts meandering. Meander, this is meander. When it when it's real slow, it'll meander down. In fact, it will finally get to the ocean, or in this case, the Gulf of Mexico. You guys, uh, the, you heard of the Gulf of Mexico, right? Yes. So, we don't have mountains in Indiana, but we do have rivers. And all the sediments, all the sediments get eroded away and they start moving. And when they get down here to Louisiana, they hit the Gulf of Mexico, they start piling up out in the water. And they pile up in a really cool shape, and you see these little ripples in here. Anybody know what this is called? It's a feature that is at the end of a river that brings all the sediments down. So if we're over here in Indiana, and we have a lot of rain, we could follow, <laughs> we could follow our sediments from the White River and the Wabash River into the Ohio River. Then it joins the Mississippi River. And we can follow the Mississippi River all the way down here to the Gulf of Mexico and find Indiana sediments. This is called a delta, a delta. And this is called a meander, meander. It's when the river goes slow. And if you looked at a river like that, it might shape like this real shallow but real wide here real deep but real narrow Let me erase this so I want to show you one more thing before we start our experiment, our investigation on how water shapes the earth. I had a chance to take kids out to a place like this. It's so beautiful. It kind of looks like this. And way down here is a river. And it kind of comes up and it's vast. Maybe you've been there. And it's got all these layers of rock. And way, 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 way down here is a river called the Colorado River. I mean, it's way down here, but I see these layers of rock and they're different colors and they're different layers. And when I stand up here with kids and look down, it's just a beautiful, anybody know where this beautiful layers of erosion and sediments are? Where is that, do you think? Anybody? Grand Canyon. Yeah, this is the Grand Canyon. It's out in Arizona. And boy, is it grand. I mean, this doesn't even give you justice, but you know, these layers, what I notice about these is that when you look at one side, 
of the canyon, you can see the same layer on the other side. This part here was eroded, and these are layers of sediments, sediments that have been deposited over millions of years. Now, the interesting thing about erosion is sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's slow, but it's always happening. But here's what's very interesting. Let me, let's get down here. Let's call this layer A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. And over here, and you can see this in all parts of the world. There might be on one side of the ocean, that same layer. And so scientists, geologists have been able to study that, hey, this layer has the same fossils in it as this layer. Thus, this must be the same layer. Things got eroded away, or things got moved away. And so who can tell me, which do you think is the oldest layers? Here's the surface. And here's the bottom. Where would be the oldest layers? Tell me when to stop, which is the oldest. Stop. stop. This is the very oldest layer? No. No? Yeah. Stop. stop. Yeah. The oldest, the oldest was deposited a long time ago, and it's down here. And the newest is up here. And scientists call that stratigraphy, strata, layers of rock, layers of rock. So this is a good thing to know. We can study time by knowing when the layers were deposited. If this was millions of years ago, and this was thousands of years ago, you can learn. It's like a, a snapshot of what the earth was like back in time. It's our only time machine we have. So in the Grand Canyon, if you get in a balloon, Maybe you probably don't want to get in a hot air balloon. Let's get in a cold air balloon because they go down. The farther you go down, it's like going back in time. And the fossils and the rocks you find down here are very old. And the new stuff's up here. Same thing happens in Indiana. Except in Indiana, we don't have a Grand Canyon. In Indiana, we have rocks that are as old, some of them as old as the Grand Canyon. And these rocks, what we have is a highway going through here and then somebody has come and cut a road cut. This is called a road cut. Has anybody ever been in Southern Indiana and seen, as you drive down by Bloomington, you see the side of the road, all these different layers? Well, if you go to Kentucky where there's mountains, you can really see this. So whether it's a river, a bulldozer, or the wind or water or ice, you can see different layers. Okay, so we've done a little background knowledge. Now let's make a model and see if we can see this in action. Okay, so this is a model of what we've been talking about. Now a model scientists use, because a model can do some things like the real thing, but not all. So a model has limitations. For example, the real world is not like this. So we're gonna learn some things from this. But this is a model of the high headwaters, like maybe in a mountain, some rocks, and then down here where the meander is. So, so this sand, is, so if, if it's going fast, it would probably just go straight like that, won't it? And cut through. But if it's going slow, what's that called when, when water kind of goes slow and... Anybody? What's it called? Yes? Anybody? It's a... Starts with an M. What? Tell me. Tell me. Meander. A meander. So what if I put a little meander in there just to give it... So let's see if we can see how water is a force that shapes the earth. And so... I'm going to pour it slow, so everybody's going to need to get a chance to do this. But before we do this, I want you to get your worksheet and draw a picture of what it looks like dry. Go ahead, do that now, please. Everybody's had a chance to draw this. So we have our headwaters, we have some rocks here, maybe that'll turn into rapids. Uh, let's try a little, what's this again called? Meander. Meander. Okay, let's just pour it really slow and see what happens. Here we go. Okay, that's slow enough. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, a little bit faster. Here comes the water. Okay, it's moving and it's filling. Is it going down a little bit faster? Water likes to go where it wants to go, doesn't it? You see how the sediments are being moved? At first, I want everybody to go slow. Keep going faster. 
and it's making a little. It's showing the erosion. It gets down there, and look, there's the delta. See how the delta just formed? Is that a little, a little bit more slow? Keep going. You got it. Well, it erodes, and up here it's all rock, like rapids, and there comes the big delta going down. And so what we're going to do, and we're going to catch all this water down here in the reservoir, and then you can add more, and we do it really fast this time. Okay, when you do it fast, it's moving rocks. And oh, it's better. making what's called a plunge pool. Look down here at the waterfall. Does it scare you? You got it fast. And you start to see all these patterns. Okay, you guys ready to try that yourself? Yeah! Okay. It's just like going straight through it. So we've been learning about forces that shape the earth. And in this class, we've learned a lot about how water can move sediments and make streams, erosion, and deposits. I'm Luke and I'm the videographer. I'm Xavier and that's a wrap.